good win on Friday night against Bath. Must have enjoyed it, did you, Jack? Yeah, it was good. Uh, pleasing to kind of importantly get the result, but also kind of get back on track a bit. We've obviously had a few disappointing performances this year, and hopefully we've kind of kickstarted ourselves into a, uh, a decent kind of block going into Christmas. Yeah, big set of fixtures, as you say. Saracens then, Montpellier and Glasgow. It's a pretty exciting time, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's you know, I mentioned it a second ago there, it has been frustrating because we have been close in these games and it's, it's just a case of making sure that we push the performance levels for more than kind of a couple of minute blocks in the game. We've got to be able to do that time after time um, in order to get the result we want. Any reason you think for that sort of stuttering performances at the moment this season, Jack? If you knew it, you wouldn't answer it, but you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's hard to put your finger on it. It's, it's been a case of a few small little errors have added up to kind of big, big sw sways in the game and big results in the game. And if you, you know, the coaches say a lot in terms of if each person makes one small error, that's 15 small errors in the game. If you start making two errors and everyone makes two errors, it, it all adds up. So it's just about trying to limit the small errors and just have those repeat solid efforts. The coach, or I saw a couple of quotes there saying you need to enjoy these wins a bit more. Were you taking them for granted, do you think? Very possibly. Um, you know, you might have seen a couple of weeks ago uh, the Gloucester result we got away from home. That was a that was a really emotional performance to be part of. There was a lot of kind of cheering when things went well and like genuine celebrating an emotion. And I think that kind of eluded us um, the early part of the season. It was a case of like we'd score a try, we'd get back and crack on with the next job. We wouldn't actually celebrate the moments we were in. Um, particularly in that first game we played, which I think was was Leicester away from home. Um, there was moments in that game where we actually did something really, really good, but it wasn't really like cheered and celebrated. It was a case of right onto the next thing, whereas you've got to make sure you do have those emotional peaks because um, you will ultimately get the drops in the game as well. And with Europe being, you know, the new sort of format, you're going to have to deliver in these big days again, aren't you? If you want to make the knockout stages. Absolutely, yeah. You know, the, the, the usual format you always like tar target your home games and look to pick up points on the road. But now it's a case of, because there's, you know, limited fixtures and it's affected by the bigger pool, it means you just got to go out and perform, you know, straight off the bat. And you always want to start on the best foot and, and get, a, get a result straight away and start, you know, making other teams having to chase you. So it's about hitting the ground running. And last season, obviously had that disappointment against Leinster. What did you learn from that day? Or have you sort of, obviously, yeah, parked that. It was a while ago now, but did you take a lot of learnings from that? Uh, I mean, obviously there was, there was large disappointment from that. You know, myself personally, I, I was pretty good with my own performance as well, as well as how the team went, but a, a big learn from it probably was the, the intensity that Leinster, you know, kept at us with. I think we started that game really well and, you know, consciously or not, whether it was a, a conscious decision, we almost kind of stepped off the gas a bit and, and that's where Leinster really thrived. They were just relentless coming at us again and again. Um, and, it, and it showed towards the end because they, they got the right side of the results. So I think no matter how we start a game, whether we fly off the blocks or whether we don't, it's just making sure that we're consistently applying pressure to the up, to the opposition. And with your game plan, do you think teams have maybe caught, caught on to it a wee bit and it needs to evolve a bit more? Or do you think if you still do what you do at the best, you are up there with the best? I think our game plan has always evolved and it is always evolving. It's never, you know, contrary to what people think and may believe, it's, it's never been consistent, you know, throughout my time here. It's, it's constantly getting tweaked and, and adapted and changed as are the rules of the game. It's just making sure that we almost stay ahead of the curve and then we have teams chasing us and we're, we're not chasing teams. And you've obviously won this competition just over a year ago. Pretty great story. And you've won a couple of premiership titles. Are you guys still as hungry as ever to go and win? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably the ultimately why we're so disappointed and gutted with last season because we've obviously tasted success previously. Um, and having that kind of snatched away from you when, when, you, when you're pretty close to it again, um, it hurts. And it's just making sure whether it's the disappointment, the, 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 the pain of last year or wanting to have that feeling again or some players wanting to come in and have it for the first time, it's just making sure whatever it is for the individual that they, they use that as a driver. Can I make it your 10th season at the club? <laughs> Been around a while. Have you got any big ambitions still going? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you know, I, I still love it. I, I still see it as um, a decent crack coming in the lads and, and chucking the ball around. You know, I feel myself privileged to do it as a job. Um, 
and ultimately you can get great rewards from it as we just spoke about there you can you can win amazing things and make amazing memories but the, the big thing is when it's not enjoyable that's probably when your head's not in the right state of mind to do it but i still absolutely love it how's your relationship with luke and diggy has it always been good yeah it's always been good like i you know i remember when luke first started to transition to hooker and he's He's always someone that gives, you know, 110% and flies himself into absolutely everything. Um, you know, and it, it, it's really good to see him go and do the, the amazing things he's done and represent the Alliance. We're all really, really proud of him here. And, you know, no doubt he's going to keep consistently performing for, for the club and internationals in the future. And finally, what do you think you have to get right? Sort of, I know it's a bigger question, but if you do want to get to the finals, what do you think is the most important thing, you know, after struggling maybe at the start of this season to go on into the latter stages of the competition in Europe? Uh, probably a big one is is getting our emotional levels right. Um, you know, it, it's easy to talk all the technicalities of the game and, you know, the small ins and outs, but it's, it's making sure you get that emotional reset um, lead, leading into the week. It's, it's easy to get revved up um, at one point or another, but it's making sure, you know, like you said, that we've, we've got a big block of games coming up. It's making sure that post that game, you do have that chill out and time away from rugby so that you can, get yourself going again, building in through the week. And by the time the weekend comes and you get onto the pitch, you're ready to chuck absolutely everything into it, physically and mentally. Great stuff, John. Good luck at the weekend. Thank you. Thanks very much.